He's one of the most decorated NBA players in history, winning consecutive MVP player awards in 2019 and 2020. He also was named the 2020 NBA Defensive Player of the Year, becoming only the third player after Michael Jordan and Hakeem Olajuwon to win both the MVP and Defensive Awards in the same season. Giannis Adedikunbo plays for the NBA's Milwaukee Bucks and in 2021 led the team to their first NBA championship in 50 years and also named Finals MVP. He is widely regarded as one of the greatest power forwards and one of the greatest European players of all time because of his size, speed, strength, and ball handling skills coupled with an intense continuous improvement mindset. Adedekunbo and his family started a foundation focused on sustainable social change that invests in local nonprofits and change makers in Greece, Nigeria, and the United States. Let's welcome Giannis Adedokunbo to the stage. Thanks for being here. I played power forward. You did? Yeah, I did. The, uh, I didn't make the top 75, but we'll, uh, okay. that's for another day. We're really thrilled that you took uh, time ahead of this, the season to be with us this morning. Thank you. Looking for forward you. to the conversation. Thank you for having me. Before we get started, I thought what we would do is play a clip from earlier this summer. Some of you may have seen it. It speaks for itself. Let's roll the tape. Every, every year you work, you work towards something, towards a goal. Right, which is to get a promotion, to be able to uh, take care of your family, to be able, I don't know, um, provide the house for them or take care of your parents. You work towards a goal. It's not a failure. It's steps to success. You know, and if you've never, I don't, know, I don't want to, I don't want to make it personal. So, there's always steps to it. You know, um, Michael Jordan played 15 years, won six championship. The other nine years was a failure. That's what you're telling me. <laughs> I'm asking you a question, yes or no? Okay, exactly. So why are you asking me that question? It's a wrong question. There's no failure in sports. You know, there's good days, bad days. Some days, some days you are able to uh, be successful, some days you're not. Some days it's your turn, some days it's not your turn. And that's what sports is about. You don't always win. Some other, other people are going to win. And this year, somebody else is going to win. Similar as that. We're going to come back next year, try to be better, try to build good habits. Try to um, play better, not have a 10-day stretch with uh, playing bad basketball, you know, and hopefully we can win a championship. So 50 years from 1971 to 2021 that we didn't win a championship, it was 50 years of failures. No, it was not. It was steps to it, you know, and we, we were able to win one. Hopefully we can win another one. You know, I sorry that I didn't want to make it personal because you asked me the same question last year, and uh, last year... I was in the in the uh, right um, mind space to answer the question back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Giannis, I know that was at a tough emotional moment. You just had been knocked out of the playoffs. I saw you watching that video intently. Yeah. What does uh, what does that bring to mind? First of all, I never thought that video was going to be uh, as viral. It's going to go as viral as uh, it went. And uh, I'm going to have that kind of feedback from people, uh, you know, uh, of my circle of people that I meet in the, in the, you know, in the street, in the airport, or wherever I, I am. So it's, uh, it's unreal. But at, at that moment, you know, I kind of answer what I felt. Um, because I was asked the same question a year ago and I wasn't uh, ready to give a response. And uh, I was kind of, I had it in the back of my head for like a year, you know? So, so I knew that in the course of my career, I'm gonna be asked a question like that again. Mm. That's why you can see the, I was a little bit, um, I tried to compose myself as much as I can, but there was a little bit of frustration uh, in my voice. Um, I really do not believe in failure. In my world, failure does not exist. Um, you know, because I always know that I'm going to wake up the next day and I'm going to go, I'm going to get back to it. I'm going to keep on working hard. I'm going to try to keep on getting better. 
you know, uh, and that's what I've done my whole career, and it, it works so far. Uh, at the end of the day, there's, you know, 520 players in the NBA and only 20 players every year win a championship. Uh, so that doesn't mean that the rest of the 500 players and the rest of 29 uh, coaches are failures. No, you know, because success is different for people, you know, for uh, what success is. Like, for example, uh, somebody's success is waking up in the morning. Uh, other people is to provide for the family, other people is breathing, other people is to be able to uh, make the dream uh, reality, which for me, that's what I've done. Uh, other people is uh, being able to uh, allow uh, their kids to have a better education than what they, what they did. For other people is to be wealthy, you know, like, there's so many different um, ways, you know, uh, you cannot define, there's so many different uh, ways uh, you can uh, talk about success, but for me, I know that as long as I don't um, give up, as long as I keep on waking every single day, even the days that I don't want to do it, I'm disciplined enough to keep on going and trying to win a championship, which that's my ultimate goal. Right. Uh, there's no way I, I have failed, you know? And um, at the end of the day, there's so many kids around the world that they're scared to get involved in uh, things that they love and things that they're passionate about because of the, um, you know, the, that they might fail. You might not be good at it, so you're a failure. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true in a way that if the kids give up and they don't uh, go, they start on Monday, uh, soccer practice, and then Tuesday, they say, Dad, uh, I didn't really like it. I don't want to go back and, you know, uh, whatever the case might be. Okay, yeah, you stop. But, like, as long as you keep on trying to keep on improving, try to figure out ways to, to uh, improve your teammate, to make your teammate successful, try keep on trying to pay additional attention uh, to details throughout your uh, career, you know, you do it every single day year, you're going to win a championship one year, like we did in 2021, and hopefully you can win another one in five years from now, this year, in ten years from now. And at the end of the day, like, I was hearing Peyton Manning speak earlier, and he's a Hall of Famer. If you keep on doing and having that approach every single day of how you're going to get better, and you don't sit and, uh, you know, second-guess yourself and worrying about what people, you know, think about you or the moments that you, people label you as a failure, you know you're gonna have a Hall of Fame career like he did. You know, it's gonna be 20 years of, of magic. So uh, at the end of the day, again, last year, we did not accomplish our goal, which is true, but we did not fail because the steps took success. And hopefully this year we can accomplish our goal. That's pretty much it. Well, I, I saw that, I think it was that night or the, uh, the morning after, I was so impressed not only with your, your composure, but what you said and how you, how you delivered it in, in such a high intensity moment. I thought to myself, if we could have Giannis join us, he'd be a perfect fit for the, the lean mindset. You embody so much of what Carol was talking about earlier in terms of the growth mindset. You mentioned you got a little bit of feedback. Yes. People in airports, I'm sure your teammates, the Bucks organization. Tell us a little bit more about the feedback you got because this isn't necessarily the view that I'm sure everybody has about the Bucks season last year. I think um, everybody liked uh, the interview and liked what I said, and I kind of saw it, you know, as a sport moment, but uh, I didn't understand that this relates to everybody mm. in life, no matter what they, they're doing in their profession. So, like, whenever I see people in, um, like, walking through the airport when I came to New York, people mentioned that interview. Like, really? Yeah. Um, and for me, it was, it, was, it was a moment that I, I spoke my, what I felt, my, my heart, you know, and I'm happy that it was able to impact and inspire people uh, around the world. I'm happy that you, you cut your eye and you invited me here today to um, hear from all these leaders and also educate myself and get smarter on things. Um, so it's, you know, it kind of allows me to keep on moving forward and keep on speaking my heart and keep on speak in my mind, you know, uh, because I might say something that might inspire many more people. So that's kind of the feedback. It was a good feedback. Good. Well, don't, don't stop. You inspired me and I'm sure many others who saw it then or uh, saw it just here over the last few minutes. 
Any other reflections today on us relative to last season? I mean, that was a moment that you captured right there hours after the game. But as you look back now, any different perspectives? Um, no. No, I wouldn't change one thing. I feel like in the moments that I've uh, not accomplished the goal in my l lowest moment of my career, I've, you know, I've got the best version of myself. Like, I've learned from them so much. Yeah. Uh, and I'm happy that things like that happen because um, I wouldn't be a, a, I wouldn't be who I am today if I didn't have the childhood I had. Um, I wouldn't be in an MVP if I, um, people did not believe and I didn't, uh, I wasn't the player that I am today or I didn't have down moments that I kind of second guess myself like, I wouldn't be a champion if in um, 2020, when we played in the playoffs, we had in uh, uh, last in, in the series. Like, in all those moments that uh, they were very, I was facing adversity, I kind of excel, I kind of learn from it. So I don't, I don't regret nothing. Uh, I love that that moment happened because it gave me like a different perspective, you know, uh, of life moving forward. Uh, because also not uh, only people learn from that clip. I learn from that clip when I go back and and see see it. Um, so no, I mean I'm in a I'm in a good place. You know I'm happy. I'm motivated. I you know I'm humble. I'm hungry. I want to go out there and make my teammates great. Um, and hopefully I can bring another championship in the the Milwaukee Bucks organization. Giannis, in the video you mentioned that you weren't in the same headspace a year ago. You might not have shared those comments in the way that you did. Tell us a little bit about what's changed 12 months on for you. I think I was, uh, I was more mature. I, I got over myself, I kind of reflect in the, you know, in the moment that he, you know, uh, the reporter, a similar reporter asked me uh, a question uh, after, um, the Boston series uh, in the playoffs that we we lost, and I was thinking, I was just thinking about it. I'm like, did he just call me a failure because I didn't win a basketball game, or did he call all my hard work and sacrifice, and uh, moments that I leave my family behind, and my teammates' hard work, and uh, all the habits we've built throughout the year, all the the games we won, all the little battles we won all the mental work that I put behind the game of basketball, like a failure. And so I was thinking about it all year. And then, you know, obviously we, we, uh, we went again and we uh, lost from uh, Miami. And uh, I, they, he asked me the same question and I was able to articulate what I was feeling mm. uh, in that clip that you, you saw better. So a good bit of reflection yes. over the course of that year, over the course of that season. Have you been able to shape the Bucks organization to think about success and failure, winning, losing in the same way, or is this really largely Giannis's view? Uh, no, I I think when we when I got with the Bucks, I was 18 years old. 18 years old. Uh, I was a skinny kid from Greece. Uh, did not know what the you know uh, the future had for me. Mm. But I, I knew two things, I'm gonna work hard, I'm gonna lead by example. Uh, I'm gonna under uh, promise and uh, over, over achieve, over deliver. Mm -hmm. uh, every single day, I'm not the guy that loves to talk about things that um, I want to accomplish. Um, because I, I don't talk the game, I, I play the game. Uh, and the 10 years, going to my 11 years now with the Milwaukee Bucks organization, I'm, I'm definitely aware that I've, I'm able to help and shape the culture of uh, the Bucks organization with uh, people that they add to the team, uh, that they're, they're over themselves. Because like you, once you get to the NBA for uh, a lot of people that they're not aware, a lot of people, get, like I say 10 to 15% of the NBA players really love basketball. Hmm. You know, which is, and it, it's, it's okay because sometimes in life like, you do something that you don't really enjoy, but you do it because of the things that it provides for you. I understand, but like, um, I'll say that um, the moment that, you know, players get to the NBA, they kind of have the, the mass, okay, I made it, they kind of relax. Mm. 
or other players get to the NBA, you know, uh, you get that first big check, you know, and you take care of your family, you're happy about it, and uh, you want the next check. You get motivated by, by money. Um, for me, it's, it's totally different. I'm, I'm motivated by greatness. I'm motivated mm -hmm. by continuously in, improving. I am I'm totally in this third uh, set of NBA players that the, no matter how good they are, or how many years they've been in the league, they never get over themselves. It's all about <laughs> them. So I realized quick, quick, uh, as I was leading the, my team, that I had to get over myself. It wasn't about me, it was about them. It's how can I get the best version of, of themselves? Earlier in my career, I was not a vocal leader. I was more of a guy that I lead by example. And I uh, got my hand dirty, and hopefully I can gain the trust of my teammates and able to follow me. But as I got older, I, I realized that my voice is powerful. I've gained the respect. I'm able to talk to them and touch them in a way that can motivate them. And I expect uh, a, a, a certain, uh, um, ex a certain uh, not a necessarily them to perform, but I want them to, for people in, in the Bucks organization to work as hard as I work. Uh, and I keep them accountable in that. The same way goes vice versa. They keep me accountable to my work. Uh, but as I was saying earlier in my career, I had to figure out a way to get over myself. And the moment when you're a leader and the head of the snake, it's over themselves and is the most humble guy and is the most hardworking guy, uh, everybody falls in line. Now also, when they fall, fall in line, you always have to kind of carry yourself in a, in a way that they know they can always rely on you. They know that my door is always open for them to come in and ask me questions about my life. My house is always open for them to come and have a, a, a dinner with uh, me and my family. My, my, when I'm in uh, the practice facility that are my teammates or at the games, they always feel comfortable to open themselves mm. uh, up to me. So win or lose, when you have, uh, when you carry yourself that way, and uh, in winnings, when you win, it's good. <laughs> so what happens when you lose, right? So as a leader, again, you have to keep your head high. You know, you have to keep on carrying yourself in the same way because there's so many ups and downs in life, there's so many ups and downs in sport, you cannot be an up and down person. You know, so when they see me, when we win, I'm happy and I'm cheering and I'm laughing, you know. And when we lose, I'm grumpy and I'm pissed and I'm <laughs> all that. That does, does not help with their confidence at all. So I kind of stay level-headed throughout the whole season, which as a leader, as I said, is, it's going to be up and down season. Sometimes I don't want to. I want to go off, right. but I can't because I know the moment we, I do that, I'm going to lose the train. I'm going to lose uh, my, my teammates. And I know how important in order for a... Uh, Bucks organization, the same way the corporate world, it's important to, for your teammates to be on the same page for you to be successful. You know, we call MVPs, championship, uh, defense player of the year. I couldn't accomplish those goals if my teammates wasn't the best version of themselves, if we did not win 60, 65 games, if we had the best record in the league for many years, mm -hmm. if we didn't go and play great basketball in the, in the uh, playoff. So, as I said, this, this, I got to stay level-headed as much as I can, and uh, always, uh, I'm, uh, I'm open. I'm open to my teammates to have the conversation. Uh, I always want my teammates to feel like they can rely on me whenever they need something in uh, basketball, on the court and off the court. Yeah, and she also mentioned in the video yes. habits, the habits that you have today, individually, the team, and perhaps the habits that need to be changed or improved getting ready for the next season. Can you share with us anything in particular from a habits perspective that you or the team have put an emphasis on here? Um, I'll say this. Personally, for me, it's, it's my approach to the game. I always try to stay as disciplined as I can. I had uh, this story that I want to share that uh, from years ago, 2016, I was young, I was 21 years old, and I was working out with my brother. 
and it was just a back and forth with me and my coach of uh, how I think I should, you know, address a situation on the court. And uh, for me, I'm very, you know, um, I don't want to say st stubborn, but I'm very like, you know, stubborn. Okay, stubborn. <laughs> but but uh, a lot of us are, I suspect, here in the audience. Uh, my biggest strength in life is that I'm stubborn, and my biggest weakness in life <laughs> is that I'm stubborn. <laughs> you know, uh, but um, my brother, my older brother, Nas, told me. He said. After we were down and having the conversation with the coach, we were in the ride back home, and uh, I was talking to him, and I said, he said to me, I said, Giannis, what you did today was not wrong, but I think you have to think about like a player that's trying to make the team. You got to think about like the last player on the team. You know, because me, I couldn't have the conversation that back and forth. I, didn't have, I don't have the luxury to have the conversation back and forth with the with uh, my coach, and I was thinking about it. And then uh, I'm a big, I take notes, I have like my notebook with us, I take notes and I, I wrote it down and I had it over the years. And what that made me understand is that my approach, I have to think about, not like this Yanis superstar, uh, best player in the world that everybody talk about. I gotta think about, like I'm the guy that's trying to make the team every single year, and the moment that I feel that way, and I carry myself that way, my teammates see that, see that and that it's easier for them to follow me. Right. It's e easier for them to adapt uh, and um, kind of fall in line with what me, the box organization, we're trying to kind of, um, the way we're trying to lead. Right. Um, but again, to go back and answer your, uh, the, different, the other part of your question is that, for me, I, it's always about keep on improving. Mm -hmm. I always try to improve as much as I can. Uh, and my teammates know throughout the regular season or throughout um, the playoffs, we just keep on worrying about ourselves. It's not about anybody else. It's about how we can be the best version of ourselves and how from every game we can take the good, take the bad, keep the good, try to improve the bad or em eliminate the bad in order for us to be better the next game. And throughout the regular season, we build good habits and you hope that you're in the position when it matters the most in the playoffs, right. uh, that you're able to execute in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the best of your uh, ability. But you do that for 82 games, you've built so much of, um, how can I say, uh, confidence because we prepared as a team. They see me, they see Chris Middleton, who is, is another leader on our team, Drew Holiday, prepare for the games and try to build habits throughout the, the regular season. So when um, the tough moment comes, when you're down 20 in the fourth quarter, when you have a bad week playing bad basketball, you don't go to bad habits. All you know is good habits. All you know is the habits that you build. So we always fall back on what we build, the character we build as a team. And that always helps us to be one of the best. The last five years, we probably, if not first, probably the second best basketball team in the, in the, in the world. Um, but me personally, the other thing that I have to say is that from the moment that I made, to, I made it to the NBA, I always figured out ways to improve. And I don't say get, only get better and improve, because when I improve, I can identify what I'm mm -hmm. getting better on. Uh, and, and then, like, for example, when I won the first MVP, it was, it was done deal. Like, I only remember those accolades. I, I, we'll talk about it when I'm 50 and 60. Right. I'm trying to stay hungry. I'm trying to stay humble, because that's what my brother basically told me, in a way. You got to think like the last player, you got to be hungry, you got to be humble. That's got to be your approach. So even when I won my first championship, I always, I said, I want, I want another one. I want, don't, tell, don't, don't call me MVP until I win another one, which at the time I couldn't understand, you know, why I said that, you know, and people were like, why, why, why don't you want to be called the MVP? You're the MVP of the league. I said, a lot of people said, maybe it was because you don't want to feel that pressure. I said, no, you know, and uh, I, I just don't want to be called MVP because I want to win another one. But now that I'm older, and I'm not 23 no more, I've realized that I am built this way. 
you know. And uh, the reason I'm built this way is because of my parents. See, my parents every single day working extremely hard, being um, immigrants from Nigeria, going to Greece, and uh, working every single every single day hard to provide for us while being illegal, not having the right paperwork, and being scared every single day that they might be deported back to, to Greece and had to figure out ways to, to, to improve and be efficient while they do it. Because if the, sorry, the, the, the police officer stopped them in the street, they'd be de deported. So I saw that for 18 years of my life. So when I came to the NBA, I had that. But I couldn't identify, I couldn't recognize it. So once I got older, I recognize it immediately, and I hold it deep into my heart, and I know that my talent is not what the video said, that my speed, my skill, my athleticism, is the mindset and the mentality I've developed over the years, so I kind of channel, channel that, and I'm you know, trying to do uh, what, you know, the things that my parents did and the things that have made me great throughout my, my life and my career, uh, on steroids, you know, and uh, hopefully when the next chapter of my life comes by, I, I'm able to do that too, you know, uh, in whatever it, it is. So, again, going back, I'm talking to my sorry, uh, going back to the uh, first MVP, then I won the second MVP. And I remember that. I said, don't call me MVP until I win a, ch a champion, a championship. I was like, what? He's the back-to-back -back MVP, best player in the world, just signed the largest contract in NBA history. Like, don't call you MVP, you're the back-to-back -back MVP. And I said, no, I want to win a championship. And then the next year, I won a championship. But it, it was just happening, you know? So now that I look back, is that I always had the mindset of like, okay, whatever is done, is done. The, the good from this, the only good thing that can come from this is that me leave it behind, because the moment, I carry it on my chest and I have like a badge of honor of like, oh, I'm the MVP. It's just gonna hold me behind. It's just gonna not allow me to improve. It's not gonna allow me to be the best version of myself. It's not gonna allow me to reach my full potential, which that's the goal. I want to be the best player that I can be. Not that um, I hear Michael Jordan, which is the best player to ever play the game, but not as, as Michael Jordan can be. I want to be the best version that, that I can be. And when I, I retire and I move on from my career, uh, to go to the next chapter, I've said that I've done it all. I have no regrets. Well, when you're ready for that next chapter, Giannis, call us at GE. <laughs> We'd love to talk to you. Thank you so much for sharing those very personal perspectives on your, your journey. All the best this season. Go easy on the Celtics, but we'll be watching. <laughs>